Konnichiwa! In 2019, while most people were waiting for games like Death Stranding, Star Wars, Gears 5 and Fire Emblem, I was waiting for a game that was made for a console built over 30 years ago. Today we're going to be doing a full review of a game that I have been waiting ages for, and it's called Xeno Crisis. Game Welcome back to the Retro Game Boy channel. My name's Mike, and if you're new to the channel, then why not consider subscribing? And remember to click that little notification bell down below so that you never miss a classic retro gaming upload. Now, Xeno Crisis was developed by the Bitmap Bureau, who are only a stone throw away from where I live. And if you want to get the game, you can get it on your PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Steam, and on your Nintendo Switch. But if you really want the game, then you can pick it up on the Neo Geo, Dreamcast, and my all-time favourite on the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis. In today's show, we're going to be playing Xeno Crisis with my Sega Tower of Power Mark I, my SG Six Button Pro Pad, and my ASCIiWare Mega Stick, all through my OSSC. Xeno Crisis. Let's take a look at the box first. So Xeno Crisis comes in a replica Mega Drive and Genesis case. This one here is actually an original Mega Drive case and I swapped out the replica case for the original case because the actual cover here, this transparent cover here that covers up this uh, amazing artwork, it's slightly more opaque than the original cover that you get on the Mega Drive. And if we look at this comparison here, you can see that we've got the replica case that comes with Xeno Crisis, and then we've got Xeno Crisis in an original Mega Drive box. You can see that on the original Mega Drive case, that the colors are actually a little bit more vibrant, and you can see more detail in the actual cover itself. And I love the spine artwork that you've got here, and it really shows off well when you have it in an original case. But the team have done a great job on the artwork. We've got the original Mega Drive logo here, but it's not. It's the Bitmap Bureau inside the original Mega Drive logo. And then everything else is very close. It's not exactly the same, but very close to what the original Mega Drive had in terms of artwork. Now, we're gonna open it up, but there's something very cool about the cover. Um, so inside, um, you're supposed to get a manual. I didn't get a manual, but uh, I emailed them and they're sending it. They're very good at uh, responding to email. But I got this art card here, which is very nice. You can see that the cover actually is dual sided. So in the UK when we had this is the original cover, this was the first gen Mega Drive covers and then we had second gen Mega Drive covers which were blue. And there we have the second gen Mega Drive cover there and it looks pretty smart. The screenshots are a lot bigger but yeah very nice. But I prefer the original artwork so we're going to go with that. Now, whilst I don't have the physical manual yet, they did send me a PDF and we can quickly look through that. And you can see we've got some really nice artwork to accompany the text. And it's, it's different than what you would get in an original um, Mega Drive game, but it's awesome that they've included a physical manual with it. It really feels like an authentic experience when you open up this game. And then lastly, we have the cartridge here. Exactly what you'd expect a Mega Drive cartridge to look like, except that it's... Uh, bitmap bureau cartridge on the back there which is very very cool but the big difference with this cartridge is probably what's inside i suspect this cartridge is actually going to be a 32 meg cartridge right let's take a look at the game now the first thing i noticed when i booted up xeno crisis is this instant hit of nostalgia as we went through the boot screens even though this is a game i haven't played before i really felt like i was playing a new release of a sega mega drive game now the first thing we see when we hit this splash screen is the fact that this is a two-player game that's right it's a couch co-op shoot 'em up next we have our options menu first we see that we've got hard or easy and what i really like about this is the attention to detail if we come back out we can see the xeno crisis screen has changed along with the color to represent that you're playing it on easy mode. But don't let it fool you, it isn't that easy. Next we have audio and we have a number of audio options in here just like you get on a traditional old school Mega Drive game and I love messing about with these menus. Now I don't know about you but I've always loved playing through the sound effects and playing the background music as well. I always thought that was awesome, a great thing about the Sega Mega Drive games. Clear. No. Hey. Thanks. <laughs> Next. 
next is our controller setup and we've got four schemes to choose from we have two for your six button controllers and we've got two for your three button controllers and then we have languages and I don't know why this is here because we've already chosen English unless of course you've made a mistake now what you're not actually seeing on this front splash screen here are two additional screens that you can access by putting in a cheat code now this is really cool because it's a proper throwback to those old school 16-bit days the first screen is the backer screen and I'll put this code in the description below and on the screen you can cycle through any of the Kickstarter backers and then you can select a level and then when you go into a game you will see that Kickstarter backer appear as a hostage within the level that you've chosen. Yeah! Yeah! The other screen you can access via a cheat code is the cheat menu, unsurprisingly. And here you can find infinite health, infinite continues, infinite ammo, infinite grenades, infinite dog tags, and the game's credits. You can also choose a location and set the seed because each one of the environments you run through is randomly generated. As soon as we've selected our number of players, we can select which character we're gonna play with and then jump straight into the game. Now this game is a modern take on Smash TV. You make your way through a series of rooms, dispatching enemies before you can move on to the next. Eventually you make your way to the end of level boss, where they ultimately meet their gruesome end and then you move on to the next level. Now as you make your way through the different rooms within Xeno Crisis, there's a ton of stuff for you to collect. Firstly, there are dog tags. These are your currency that you're going to use at the end of each level to buy upgrades for your character. And there are a number of things that you can upgrade. Things like your health, power, number of grenades that you can carry, even your speed. There are also nine weapons for you to collect. Now these weapons only last a certain amount of time, so making the most of them while you have this weapon is vital. You'll also notice that your ammo clip is constantly depleting, and so you're gonna have to pick up ammo crates as you move around the different levels. You can also pick up grenades to replenish your grenades, and you can pick up medikits. Every now and then you're also gonna come across a locked door that will require a security card. Ultimately, you're gonna to have to work through a number of other rooms to find the security card before the locked door can be opened. Now, obviously, the underpinning mechanic of this game is its control system, and you can play either on a three-button controller or on a six-button controller. Now, the three-button configuration works well. I actually use the ASCIIWare Mega Stick, and I find the joystick a lot better than the joypad to play with when it's a three-button configuration. With the three-button config, when you actually fire your weapon, you'll find that you're locked in the direction you're facing, and you'll be strafing as you fire. If you want to change direction, then you'll need to let go of the fire button, change direction, and shoot. Now this happens pretty seamlessly and is very intuitive. You can also use the A and C buttons while shooting to move clockwise and anti-clockwise while you shoot. Although this is not so easy once you layer on the fact that you need to use your grenade buttons and use the ever important roll button. It becomes a super skill learning how to play this way and you're probably better off just sticking with the standard attack. Now if you have it, I would recommend a six button configuration. Here we see the A, B, X and Y buttons used as a second thumbstick. And so what you end up with is a twin stick shooter. And this really is what this game is at heart. Using the twin stick shooter method allows you to dispatch enemies way easier and execute on that all important roll and grenade throw. Now in terms of combat, you have your weapon and a range of weapons that you find as you go through the game. You also have grenades that you can throw and you have close quarter combat. If you walk up close to an enemy, then your Marine will automatically swipe a knife through the enemy, dispatching it in 
instantly. And this is great for stationary turret enemies where you can just walk up to them and dispatch them with a single attack. Also, if you're down to your last couple of enemies, it's well worth just using your knife attack. Now, the most important move that you can perform in this game is the roll. The roll not only allows you to cover a great deal of distance quickly, it also makes you invincible as you're performing the roll. This allows you to dodge through large groups of enemies or avoid projectiles. Now, mastering the roll is vital if you want to go far in this game, especially on the hard difficulty. There's a number of things you can do with roll. You can interrupt your roll as you're moving along. So if you need to land dead in between two sets of enemies, you can just press the roll button again and you automatically break out of the roll. Also, a key skill to learn is how to drop grenades when you're rolling. And this is brilliant for some of the boss battles that occur. Rolling in front of a boss, dropping a grenade right on their head and rolling out of harm is perfect for dispatching those hard to kill enemies quickly. <laughs> Another combat skill that's available during gunplay is the ability to discard your currently equipped weapon. Now you can't discard your primary auto rifle, but you can discard any of the optional special weapons that you pick up. Now I've not done this yet, but if you press all three buttons at the same time, you'll chuck that super weapon away. Now once you've mastered your role, figured out your grenades and become a master at your auto rifle, you're set to take on a plethora of enemies. And there are a ton of them to take on. This game is so much fun. It's so satisfying seeing the enemies explode in a pool of blood. The sound effects are fantastic and the music composition for each level is brilliant. <laughs> Graphically, this game is almost on par with some of the first generation Neo Geo games, which is amazing considering that it's running on a Mega Drive Mark 1. There is no doubt in my mind that if this game had come out at the height of the Mega Drive, that it would have been a classic number one seller, and probably would have spawned a ton of sequels. Now once you've made your way through easy or hard mode in one or two players, there's another two secret menus that you can access on the splash screen. First is boss rush mode. And in boss rush mode, you have to take on all the bosses sequentially with the weapons that you've been given. Now it sounds easier than it is. And I haven't really managed to get past, I think, boss two, but it's a lot of fun. The last mode you can unlock via a cheat code is probably the best mode in the entire game. And the reason why I'm gonna be coming back to Xeno Crisis again and again and again. And that's infinite mode. Now in this mode, you have one room and an infinite number of monsters to take on. Now this mode is fantastic. Not only do you dispatch wave after wave after wave of bad guys, but as you go around, you actually get to pick up the character power-ups that you would normally buy with the dog tags. So you'll pick up extra health, more power, better speed, more grenades. It's a brilliant idea. All the super weapons are also available and will appear periodically as you take on this horde of infinite monsters. Playing this in two player mode is an absolute joy. So if you're a couch co-op player, this is a must for you. Commencing operations. It's a trap. Xeno Crisis is a stunning game, and after waiting for this game for almost a year, it hasn't let me down at all. The audio, sound effects, presentation, visuals, the graphics of the game, the gun gameplay, the character design, all of it is just brilliant. 
it surpassed my expectations. Playing it on a six player joypad for me is where you're gonna get the better experience, but playing on a three button pad is just as good. And once you've mastered that role, this game comes into its own. It's so much fun. And if you've got two players with you, then the game is even better, especially on that infinite mode. Now I've only got two gripes with the game, and that is when you hit pause, you can't exit the game itself. You've only got pause or unpause. And this is useful when you're trying to kind of do a no death run, or you're getting to the end of the game, you know you're gonna die anyway, and you just wanna reset and get back into it. The other is there's no demo mode. This was a classic Mega Drive trait. Now, of course, this game's not going into retail shops, so it doesn't really need a demo mode, but that, I think, would have been the cherry on top. It would have really made it feel like a classic Mega Drive game. I cannot recommend this game enough, especially if you're gonna play it on original hardware like the Mega Drive, Genesis, Dreamcast, or Neo Geo. But you can always pick it up on your Nintendo Switch, which is where most of you are probably gonna pick it up, your PlayStation 4, your Xbox One, or on Steam. And that's it for today's review of Xenocrisis. Again, if you've enjoyed what you've seen today, then why not subscribe to the Retro Gamer Boy channel? And if you love retro gaming, then you might as well check out one of these two videos over here.